If you're over 50, the battle with losing upper body strength is real. On average, people lose 3 to 8% of their muscle mass every decade after 30 years old. And it only gets worse after you hit age 60. Fortunately, though, that's just an average, which means some people lose more and some people lose less. So if you'd like to learn how you can do better than average, then stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and I've got five little-known secrets that people over 50 can use to maintain or even build upper body strength. You ready to get started? Let's dive in. So tip number one is starting with your neck. All of your upper body muscles, your shoulder blades and your arms, are basically suspended from your neck. You've got one little bony connection at your collarbone, but essentially everything's hanging from your neck. So anytime you use your arms, you're pulling on your neck. And if you don't have a solid base to pull from, then you're not going to be as strong as you could be. Additionally, all of the nerves to your arms come out of your neck. And degenerative disc disease is increasingly common as you age. By the time you become 50 years of age, about 80% of people without any pain at all have degenerative disc disease. And about 56% of people have disc height loss. Now, when you lose disc height, that starts to pinch on the nerves that go down into your arms. And if you're pinching on those nerves, it can cause subclinical muscle loss. Even if you don't have pain or massive loss that you notice, I can't tell you how many times I've done a routine neurological screening on a patient and found substantial differences on one side versus the other in terms of strength, and they weren't even aware of it because a lot of times you don't even become aware of it until the problem gets really bad. So how do you maintain space where the nerves come out of your neck and give yourself a solid base to pull from? Well, one easy tip is to do a slight chin tuck that opens up the spaces where the nerves come out of your neck versus being in an extended position like that pinches the nerves that come out of your neck. And so by slightly tucking your chin, when you're doing upper body exercises, as well as when you're going through the course of your day, maximizes the spaces where the nerves come out of your neck, as well as gives your muscles a strong, solid base to pull from. So that's tip number one, start from your neck. Now tip number two is to strengthen the serratus. Now what's a serratus? Most people are aware of your biceps and your triceps and your chest and your lats, but your serratus anterior is a serrated muscle that attaches to the anterior or front side of your rib cage and then runs underneath your shoulder blade. It's important in stabilizing your shoulder blade as you use your arms, as well as moving your shoulder blades outwards and upwards as you press away from you or as you press something up over your head. And so one easy way to strengthen your serratus anterior, if you're just getting started, is by doing a wall slide. And so you'll face towards the wall and put pressure into the wall with your arms. Then slide your arms up the wall while maintaining pressure in. Hold about 10 seconds at the top and then come back down. And repeat that about 10 times, holding for 10 seconds each time. Now, if that gets too easy for you, you can add a resistance band or even do it with weights. In fact, just doing a shoulder press overhead and then pressing up a little bit higher is a good way to strengthen your serratus anterior. Additionally, if you're doing a push-up, going to the end range of the push-up and then doing a little plus is another good way to strengthen your serratus anterior. Now, tip number three is to lead with your elbows. And that's really important when you're doing either pressing exercises or pulling exercises. A lot of people focus too much on moving the weights that are in their hands, whether they're pushing them away or pulling them towards. But when you're pressing or pulling, you're using chest muscles or lat muscles to move your upper arm. And so your hands are really just grips or hooks in that case. And so you want to focus more on pulling the elbow to your side if you're doing a row or a lat pull down, pulling the elbow in to your side, or if you're doing a pressing motion like a bench press or an overhead press about pushing your elbow upwards or pressing your elbows outwards. 
and the hands are just holding on to the weight. So that's tip number three is to lead with your elbows. Now tip number four is to work the muscle, not the weight. And that's important for any exercise, whether it be upper body or lower body. But you're really training to improve your muscle strength. And so don't focus too much on moving the weight, but rather using the correct muscle to move the weight. So if you're using a bicep curl, rather than just focusing on getting the weight from point A to point B, focus on contracting the muscle and feeling the right muscle work. Or if you're doing a tricep extension overhead, don't focus on just getting the weight from point A to point B, but rather using the correct muscle and squeezing your triceps to get the weight to where it's supposed to go. So that's tip number four is work the muscle, not the weight. Now, tip number five is the one that people always ask about, and that's how many sets, how many reps, and how often. Now, how often? You need to train regularly, and that's at least once, but preferably two to three times per week. If you're not training your muscles regularly, then you're getting them stronger, and then they're going back to baseline, and getting them stronger and going back to baseline. So you need to have repeat stimulus before you go back to your baseline in order to appropriately gain muscle strength. And for most people, that's twice a week, possibly three if you're really into it, but for most people, strength training twice a week is adequate. Now, as far as sets and reps, overload is the main principle. And so don't get too caught up on the sets and reps. If you're doing something that you're not used to and working your body to levels it's not used to going, it's going to respond and get stronger. Now, if you want to be technical about it, if you're training for absolute muscle strength, the ability to move something heavy once, like lifting a suitcase into an overhead bin, then you're going to want to train with heavier weights for lower reps. So that's usually six or less repetitions and doing it for four to six sets since you're doing fewer repetitions. Now, a set is a number of repetitions that you're able to do with good technique but no more. And a lot of people mistake on that because a lot of people will just do, say, I'm doing six repetitions or I'm doing 10 repetitions and then stop. But you should be using a weight heavy enough that you can do six repetitions with good technique and no more if you're training for absolute strength. Now, because you're training so heavy, if you're training for absolute strength, you need a lot of rest in between sets. It takes about three minutes for your muscles to fully recover their energy stores or ATP stores. And so you really need to rest about three to five minutes between sets if you're training for absolute strength. And that is one mistake that I see people making is that they often do not work the muscle hard enough or rest long enough to allow it to fully recover. Now, if you're training more for muscle hypertrophy, building muscle mass, then you wanna use moderate weight with moderate reps. So that would be six to 12 or more often eight to 12 repetitions and using a weight again that you can do eight repetitions and no more with good technique or 12 repetitions and no more with good technique. So you should stay in that range, but keep in mind that you should be getting pretty close to failure when you get to the end of that range. And because you're doing eight to 12 reps, usually it's gonna be around three to four sets of those. Now, if you're training for muscle endurance, the ability to work longer without tiring out, you're going to use 12 or higher repetitions, but you may only need two to three sets. So you're going to use lighter weights doing higher repetitions if you're training for muscle endurance or just to have maybe more toned muscles, but you're not really absolutely concerned with building muscle strength or with building muscle mass. So those were the five tips to build or maintain upper body strength if you're over 50. But wait, there's more. None of those five tips are gonna mean anything if you're not fueling your body properly. Proteins make up the building blocks of your muscles. And if you're breaking your muscles down with exercise, but you don't have anything to build them back up, then you're not going to get any stronger. And none of those five things that I just mentioned are gonna make any difference at all. Now, I didn't cover that in a video because that's really a broad enough topic that it deserves a video all on its own. And so I made one. And you can check that one out. But if you did find this video helpful, 
make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.